you. <laughs> when I was in elementary school, we had this collection of motivational posters that hung around on the walls in our classroom. And one of my favorite ones said, anything is possible if only you believe. And the word believe was written in italic, so you knew it was really serious, right? <laughs> and I was a believer. I believed in wonder and curiosity. I believed in imagination and being pleasantly surprised. And I believed in fat chances and long shots and underdogs. And I very much believed in myself and the idea that if I worked hard enough, I could make anything possible. So to me, that poster was more than just inspirational. It was a license to move mountains. And I never forgot it. And to this day, I still take those words very much to heart. And when people would see only a slim chance, I was focused on possibility. So it's kind of like the scene from the movie Dumb and Dumber, where Jim Carrey's character is in love with Lauren Holly's character, but she tells him that his chances of a relationship with her are like one in a million, right? But instead of being devastated, he says, so you're saying there's a chance, <laughs> right? And my belief in my personal life, my belief in that chance has literally taken me all around the world. And it's led to all kinds of really exciting adventures, like owning my own business and becoming a published author. And more recently, it led to completing a 3,200-mile bicycle ride across the country, all the way from California to Florida. Now, believing in possibility gives us strength. It helps us grow. It gives us confidence to be able to take risks. And like a light at the end of our respective tunnels, it gives us the strength to keep going when we have every excuse to quit. Our beliefs are powerful. They're so powerful that they literally become our realities. And it turns out that it doesn't really matter if our beliefs are accurate or even anywhere near realistic. All that really matters is that we believe they're possible. But there's always a but, isn't there? Always a but. Because our beliefs have so much power, if we're not careful about what we believe in and where those beliefs are leading us, they can do more harm than good. My belief in possibility gave me a lot of confidence but it also led me to worry, like a lot, about anything and everything and how it could all possibly go wrong. And one day, when I was 11 years old, I suddenly started worrying that my hands were dirty and I needed to wash them. But not just before dinner or after using the bathroom, like all the time. And if I even tried to think about not washing them, they would feel so dirty that I would have to wash them again and again and again and again and again, hundreds of times a day. And so they, they became raw and they were red. I mean, it actually looked like I had gloves on. There was a line at my wrist. And they were cracking and bleeding. But I couldn't stop, because I would just think about all the things that you could possibly catch from touching a doorknob or a door handle. Or, or what about the chair? And someone who's sitting in that chair probably touched the door handle. And who knows what else? Oh my god, what else did they touch? And it just went on and on like that. And then I'd have to wash all of it. My relentless belief in possibility had become so twisted that I was absolutely convinced that if I didn't wash often enough or well enough or in precisely the right way, any number of horrible things would happen. And that's when, like an uninvited guest that you just can't get rid of, obsessive compulsive disorder just showed up on my doorstep and barged right into my life, quite without permission, I will say. And at the time, I didn't realize that what I was experiencing had a name. 
but I did know that it was awful. It was so exhausting. And it was really humiliating and completely degrading. But I also knew that something wasn't right. I knew something was wrong. I knew that whatever I was feeling and thinking was not normal. Uh, and I knew that it was completely irrational. But that didn't matter, because guess what? There was that poster on the wall reminding me that anything was possible. And so I scrubbed. And as my beliefs got stronger, everything else got worse. Now, research shows that the more strongly we believe in something, the more we tend to overlook anything that lies outside of that belief or anything that contradicts that belief. In other words, as we become more focused on whatever it is that we're looking for or looking at, the more we tend to see only that. So it's kind of like when you buy a new Prius or something, and then you're out driving around, and suddenly it seems like everybody's driving a new Prius or whatever, right? You've been there. Yeah, so there's actually a name for that. It's called confirmation bias. And its effects can literally be blinding. So in my case, my focus had become so narrow that all I could see, literally, was danger and catastrophe and absolute horror just lurking around every single corner, everywhere. Which, of course, made me horribly anxious. OCD is actually an anxiety disorder, so pff, I was a wreck. Horribly anxious. And the more anxious I became, the more narrow my focus became. And the more narrow my focus became, the more real everything all those fears, the more real they felt. And it was just this horrible cycle. So eventually, I started skipping out on all kinds of things, skipping out on life. And I would, I loved school, but I would skip certain classes. I, I actually skipped recess. I was a kid who skipped recess. And I loved field trips, but I would stay home sick on field trip days, all in an effort to just keep myself safe, so I thought, and just really to avoid anything that might trigger yet another anxiety attack. And it got to the point where leaving my house or my bedroom became a real challenge. And OCD had turned my belief in possibility against me. And confirmation bias was its accomplice. And in the 22 years since, it has been a constant battle. We can manage OCD with medication and therapy, but there is no cure. So some days I have the upper hand, and some days I don't. <sighs> but the good news is that most of you don't have OCD, because it turns out not everyone can be so lucky. <laughs> Only about 1% of the population can stake that claim. But you are not immune to the effects of confirmation bias and the way that it can distort your thinking and turn your beliefs against you. So whether that means that you don't pursue that business idea that you have had for years because all you can see are ways that you would surely fail, or maybe you're avoiding the trip of a lifetime because everywhere you look, you find a reason not to go. Whenever you let your beliefs, whether just any belief, or especially fear-based beliefs, whenever you let them drive your focus to such a narrow corner, you are literally holding yourself back and cutting yourself off from a world of possibilities in a very real way. So what do you do? It's a fair question. Well, you challenge yourself and your beliefs. And instead of only focusing on things that confirm them, you have to train yourself or even force yourself to widen your perspective and actively seek out other possibilities that you couldn't see before or that you simply refused to acknowledge. Explore them and spend time on them. Let them swim around in your head and dwell on them with as much passion and energy as you previously spent dwelling on your fears. That's what they teach you in OCD therapy. Right? 
It's called balancing your thinking. So could that trip that you want to take turn out to be a disaster? Absolutely, it is possible. But what if it's not a disaster? What if it's actually fun? What if you learn something new about yourself or the world? And what about, what about those other trips that you've taken before? I mean, haven't some of them turned out pretty great? Isn't it entirely possible that this trip could be great too? Maybe even one of the best, who knows? So balancing your thinking can sometimes be easier said than done, especially if you're having to battle against OCD and your own neurochemistry is fighting against you. So it really takes commitment, ongoing, lifelong commitment. And in my case, OCD flares up now and then, and recently, it flared up pretty bad. Like, it was actually really bad. And I couldn't handle it on my own. That's how bad it got. So I went to get some help. And I found myself in a therapist's office where I was quickly told that my case was actually so severe that I needed to drop everything, leave, the town, leave town, leave the state, and check myself into a long-term care clinic. And <laughs> I was barely able to leave the house at that time and in a near constant state of panic. But that was devastating. I knew things had gone from bad to very much worse. But now my own therapist was giving up on me. <laughs> and my mind started racing and immediately started focusing in on and catastrophizing all the horrible ways that my life was about to fall apart and break into a million tiny pieces. But then <sighs> I took a deep breath. And like a good little OCD patient, I widened my focus to get some perspective and rebalance my thinking. And that's when I realized that this therapist who had given up on me did so after only eight sessions, which either meant that I was indeed really, really bad, or maybe it was possible she was, <laughs> right? And of all the completely irrational things that I had spent the last 22 years of my life trying so desperately not to believe, I suddenly found myself wondering, why should I believe her? And that's when things changed. And suddenly, I had options. Options I couldn't see before. Options that included finding a different therapist, right? <laughs> And that's when I began to climb out of this hole that I had been in for more than six months, for the better part of a year, really. And I began to put my life back together again. Now, no one really knows for sure where our beliefs come from or how our brains decide what's real and what's not. But I believe that if we can find a way to consciously own the beliefs that we have, to own our beliefs, rather than letting our beliefs own us, then anything really is possible. Thank you.